Hi, this is Alessio Rostani, I'm leading Trader. Hope you're well. This will be a short and sweet update here on the Bitcoin market. Many of you have been asking me this question, which is, hey, Alessio, what's happening with the pulse signal on the higher time frame on Bitcoin, on the weekly time frame? Let me explain to you what I'm talking about. So let me just show you this particular video. In fact, this is the video I'm talking about, which I mentioned back in December, as a matter of fact. This is the one I'm talking about. The Bitcoin signal nobody is watching right now. What signal is that? Well, that is, let me show you that particular video right here. So in that video, which was back on December 7th, I mentioned this, I said, look, we are now three bars into the pulse signal, okay? The pulse signal actually fired towards the end of November, around about Thanksgiving, as a matter of fact. And at the time when I made this video, uh, it was on, on the 7th of December, and I said, look, pulse signals indicate strong momentum moves, usually big moves in the market. This is a transition from low to high volatility. And also in that video, what I said was that the average pulse signal lasts about 8 to 10 bars. So where are we right now? So as you can see, but this is the daily time frame chart. Let me switch this to a weekly time frame chart on Bitcoin. Okay, and you can see this much better here. And I'm just zoom in. We are now nine bars in this pulse signal. We're in the ninth. Uh, well, we just finished the ninth week on this pulse signal since it fired. And that means potentially we have one more pulse bar, one more week of this pulse momentum to go, which will take us into this week that is coming. Now, I should just say, the average pulse lasts about eight to 10 bars, but there have been occasions when the pulse has lasted much more than um, just eight to 10 bars. There have been occasions when the pulse signal has lasted about 15 or 20 bars. So maybe this is one of those times. Maybe the pulse signal might take more than 10 weeks in this case. But in any case, let's just uh, not get ahead of ourselves. Because the average pulse signal lasts about eight to 10 bars, in this case, eight to 10 weeks, that means there is still gonna be downside pressure on Bitcoin. So what that means is this, as long as the momentum on Bitcoin, so this momentum here is bearish, you can see it's pointing downwards and the momentum has not dissipated. By the way, you will know the momentum has dissipated when something like this happens, when for example, you get the momentum bars going the other way, as opposed to going down, they start pushing the other direction. All right, and that has not happened yet. And because the momentum is still bearish on Bitcoin on the higher time frame, remember guys, always look at the higher time frame chart, uh, like the weekly time frame chart, because that can often give you clues as to what's happening on the lower time frames as well. So because the trend on Bitcoin still remains bearish, still remains to the downside, and because the momentum still remains bearish as well, uh, and I think probably got at least another uh, a week or so in this momentum. That means that on the lower time frame, just on the daily time frame, we could see further downside pressure. Okay, and as I said in my video about a few weeks ago, I said what I'm looking for is another retest, another retest of the previous lows on Bitcoin. I don't think Bitcoin has bottomed, uh, but I think in this year, I think we could see a bottom this year in 2019. And in a future video, I'll tell you exactly when I think in 2019, potentially we could see some kind of bottom. Uh, but I don't think we've bottomed just yet. But what I would like to see, I would like to see another retest of these previous lows in Bitcoin. Okay, And that could potentially happen maybe in the next few weeks or maybe very soon, much sooner than that. Uh, so bottom line is, the question is this, that this is the big question, that what's going to be the reaction of Bitcoin when and if it retests that low. So if, for example, Bitcoin comes back to this low near the lows of 3,100 or 3,000, 3,000 would be a very important psychological level on Bitcoin. The question is, how will it react to that level? Will it, will it hold that level and then bounce off? In which case we might see the beginning of a bottom on Bitcoin, or will it fall below that level? Okay, will it just collapse and fall below that level, below the 3000 level, which could lead to further selling pressure? So, you know, that's gonna be the major question right now on Bitcoin. That's what I'm really interested to see what's gonna happen on Bitcoin. And again, remember guys, one more thing I wanna mention here is this, by the way, which is that anytime there is a weekly pulse, so let me just go back to the weekly time frame. So anytime there's a weekly pulse, as you can see here, all right. That means that the probability, the probability of a pulse on the lower time frame, like a daily time frame, is also going to be to the downside. So when there's a weekly pulse fire to the downside, like you see here on the on the weekly chart, that means on the daily time frame chart, it's much more likely that the pulse will fire potentially to the downside as well. And that of course increases the odds of this downtrend continuing for a potential retest of the previous lows. 
Okay. All right, guys. And just before I finish, let me say that I've covered XRP, ETH, and LTC in my members video update. Um, and of course, you can become a member today on this link. And guys, if this video has helped, please give it a thumbs up and also please subscribe for future updates as well. Thanks a lot. Bye for now.